Sophie, I'm a data scientist from Megan Phi. And uh, today I'm going to talk about um, the findings of our recent research on the MEV value allocation in the supply chain. So um, first, um, let's define what is MEV first. I think the hot topic in THC this year is talking about like the big firms are coming to the MEV market and doing the CFI DeFi arbitrage. So, um, like, if uh, someone were to pay uh, a bribe to the block builders to um, let, the, let them to bundle their transactions in the block or put their transactions at the top of the block, then they will have a high suspicion of doing uh, MEV related activities. Um, so, let's see what, what roles are involved in the MEV supply chain. So, it involves like searchers and builders and validators. Um, so if we want to value the MEV, um, uh, like how, how it has been allocated in the supply chain, we need to know the source, like how much value those searchers has been generated from the market. And um, so there's a lot of talks and data like trying to figure out um, what value has been generated from the like, DeFi, CFI MEV. And um, I think uh, the Frontier Research and also the SMG has done a lot of research on how much value uh, it has been extracted from the DeFi, CFI arbitrage. Um, it's not hard to identify the CFI, DeFi arbitrage because the big firms use uh, certain addresses. You can just find the address and see their, their activities on chain, and then you assume what they're doing on the CFI, and you can calculate down the value. Um, but um, it's hard to do the DeFi MEV value, uh, value estimate because those MEV bots on DeFi um, change their address a lot, and they change their strategies, uh, uh, like keep changing their strategies. So algorithms is needed to identify this kind of uh, MEV activities. Uh, that's where we were doing it. And um, so currently, the three famous DeFi MEV type includes the arbitrage in atomic transaction, uh, the sandwich attacks, and also the liquidation. Uh, so it's all included in Eigenfi's uh, product. So um, our MEV value allocation on DeFi were based on the three MEV types that we have been identified. So here is um, how a typical arbitrage transaction will look like. So it will need to swap between at least two trading values, and there needs to be have a price difference between the trading values, and those balls uh, needs to have a surplus uh, we'll have a surplus after the arbitrage circle back. Uh, this is um, how um, a like, feature of the sandwich attack looks like. Um, so the attacker will targeting on the victim's swapping venue, and will do the front run before the victim transaction, and then doing a back run after the victim transaction to generate the profit. How, so here is a um, liquidation transaction looks like. It's also very clear the liquidator repays the borrower's debt assets, and then it, in return, it gets the borrower's uh, collateral assets uh, in a better price. So now let's talk about how much value that has been generated from those searchers. Um, so the MEV value, actually the revenue has been um, highly dependent on the market. So if the market fluctuates a lot, the MEV generates more revenue. Looks like, um, so for example, like in, November last year, when the FTX crash, and then the money uh, just flow from CFI to DeFi and then creates a lot of the uh, arbitrage and sandwich opportunities. And also this year, uh, in March, the USDC DPAC, and uh, indeed it creates a lot of act, uh, opportunities for the arbitrageurs. And uh, since April, with the appearance of the Jerry Subway sandwich board, um, the Amiva activities start to, incre uh, start to increase a lot. Um, like in May, with the groom of the Mimi coins trading, it creates a lot of opportunities for the sandwich bots. And just in May, a single month, Amivi has generated $68 million revenue from the market. Okay, let's be clear. The searchers are not the ones that are involved in the MEV supply chain. So around like all, all the money that they generated from the market, they need to split a certain amount of the cake to the builders and the editors. So let's see how the value has been flowed to the, in the whole supply chain. 
so here is the data that we have been calculated um, um, for the recent months. So it's, um, based, uh, it's from the June 11th to July 11th. And uh, it's like for the recent months, for the 30 days, uh, the searchers has been extracted uh, around $20 million from the on-chain transaction. And you should be noticing that uh, this is just based on the minimum amount because we're only considering the DeFi MEV. That means we only consider the arbitrary sandwich and the liquidation. So based on the uh, data and the investigations conducted by Frontier and SMG, they noticed that the CFI DeFi arbitrage also the value is comparable to the DeFi MEV. So you will expect that this number to be like doubled or even more. But let's see, um, for all the values that have been generated, the searchers only left with four, uh, four, uh, almost $5 million left in the pocket, and the rest of the rewards flows to the builders and editors. And But the builders only keep like $1.5 million profit in the pocket, and the rest flows to the editors. Looks like um, you can see the editors just like, gain a profit of $16 million revenue from the MEV market, and um, from the trans regular transaction, it's like $19 million. So it's like MEV uh, accounted for almost half of the validator's income currently. So what's the uh, MEV allocation um, market is, looks like, like four months ago at the beginning of this year, and how the situation has been changing from the beginning of the year? It can be, uh, so here is, um, is uh, like the data we calculated um, this year from, from January and February. This is two months data. Uh, so the searchers gain the profit of seven million dollars in two months, but look at look look looks like uh, look at the builders' profit. The builders is like workers a non-profit organization, so it's like two two months only 0.2 million dollars left for their pocket, and the editors uh, get most of the money. So here I have uh, separated with different colors of the transfer from the builders to the validators in uh, black color and purple color here. Indicates whether for that block, whether there's a direct transfer from the block builder to the validator. So um, I want to mention is uh, the builder's behavior pattern when they trying to communicate with the validators. So for those builders, for the MEV boost uh, typical behavior, there will be a transfer at the end of the block from the block builder to the validators. That's a typical MEV boost behavior, right? But for those um, builders that gain zero profit or they were subsidizing the validators, they, could, they may set the fee recipient of the block as the validator's address. Uh, so the, all the block building's income including the priority fee and the builder's payment. It doesn't flow to the builders, just go directly to the validator's address. So based on the uh, behavior between the builders and validators, we have uh, clarified our data into three different kind of classes. So the first class is uh, like the MEV boost typical behavior. Um, so builders pays to the validators at the end of the block. And you can see from the data here, this class, the builders that belongs to this class, has, um, the profit has actually increased a little bit. So from the beginning of the year, it's only like 0.2 million dollars uh, profits, but now it's 1.5, even though it's still like very small amount of the cake, but it's, still, it's, cap it's, it's increasing. And the second class would be um, the builders. There's, like for that block, there is no direct transfer from the builders to the validators. Uh, so the fee recipient is a validator address, and we don't see any information in the extra data of that block, which means that uh, this kind of block is built by the validator without connect to the relay. Um, this, this doesn't change too much um, from the beginning, of, compared with the beginning of the year. And the third class is what I want to talk about today, um, which means the builder set the fee recipient as a validator, and leave the messages at extra data. So you know that this is built by uh, a block builder, but just to see the block and the fee recipient is just the, the validator's address. And we were, we were, we were um, decoding on the extra data and see 
which builders are doing this. So here's, uh, here's the results. Looks like the beaver are the ones that are doing the most of this kind of um, action, block building. Uh, so, and the rest is like Titan, Blockstrut, and uh, uh, Builder 6.9. So they are, they are the ones that were acting like that. Um, so the action of um, changing the fee recipient as a validator, that means giving up everything for all the income from the block building to the validators. So this kind of action um, could lead to could be uh, could could be oriented from the two reasons. One is that the block builder is doing the training themselves. So in the blocks, they do have the transactions that they were trying to gain some profit. So they don't care too much about. A, income of block building, and then just to generate profit from their own trading strategies. This is a possibility, one possibility. And there, there is another possibility that um, those builders are doing validators. So they're like, they're not separated, they're the same role. So um, we don't know, I think maybe, maybe the first situation could be more possible, but you cannot deny the possibility of the situation too, that the builders are the validators. So I think it's a um, good topic to investigate further. Okay, so um, that's, that's all the data I'm, I'm hoping to talk, uh, like show everyone about the MEV allocation in the supply chain. But um, we, I have, we have just uh, read a book with a collection of um, all the interesting transactions. If you want to know some new MEV strategies and you want, you want to know some trading strategies like those bots were doing and also some on-chain attacks, you can scan this QR code and it will lead you to the booklet that we have just written with a collection of interesting transactions. So I hope you will find uh, some, thing, some, some transactions that matches your interest. Okay, thanks for listening to my presentation.